and welcome back. Okay, so previously in the film we were having a look at this, which is the Series 1 Land Rover. And also we've pulled out our Willis Jeep over here. In fact, this is a French Hotchkiss Jeep, but more or less the same as the Willis. And we're going to try and compare these two together to try and find out if we can see the origins of the Land Rover inside of the Jeep. changed the fuel on this but again it's been sucking up uh, sediment out of the fuel tank and so therefore we've had to clean that through again and so this is running at the moment we're pretty pleased with it and this one obviously no problems at all so let's just have a look at these two and see if we can see the similarities between the vehicles so over here this is the Willis Jeep so this one is actually a Hotchkiss so it's a 24 volt it's got a 2.2 litre side valve petrol engine in there and steering's on the left obviously and this one's marked up as a world war ii jeep over here we have the series one land rover so this one is a 1951 preceding this uh the 1950 to 52 year you do have a grill uh, which extends over to here and the lights come through it it's called a light through grill this one is the first year in which they started using this familiar t-shape what we've got inside of here is a two and a quarter litre petrol engine. So this is actually out of the later series, the Series 2 Land Rover. So this is quite a common uh, upgrade that happened when these were still actually in use rather than a collector's vehicle. So yes, it's the later petrol engine in there. You've also got a slightly later steering box as well, and that's out of a Series 2 Land Rover. But that makes this vehicle very, very usable on the road. The main difference, as you can see, between the Land Rover and the Jeep behind me is this is actually made out of aluminium. So steel was in short supply at the end of war in the UK, so these vehicles were actually made out of uh, aluminium. Apart from the bulkheads, some did have aluminium bulkheads, but this one's got a steel one, so that's in good shape. It runs on a chassis underneath, so this body bolts onto the chassis, very, very similar to the Willis Jeep, and it's in and high and low ratio. So, which came first, the chicken or the egg? As you can probably work out, being designed in the 40s, the American Jeep came first. So interestingly, the designer of the Series 1 Land Rover used to own one of these. I believe it was black and he painted the grille silver and he used it on his land and was very impressed with it. So when he was given the opportunity to design the 4x4 at the end of the Second World War, obviously there were elements of this that were copied and placed into the Series 1. So let's just have a look at a couple of those elements. So here we have my trusty tape measure, and we're going to see how these two vehicles shape up. So we're going to measure here, so this is very, very roughly, the distance across on the chassis. Now you must remember that these uh, wings hang over slightly over the wheels, but we're looking there we're at about 58 inches. So if we go over to the Willis Jeep, we're going to measure between the wheels on here, and there we go, we're roughly the same. What we will now look at is the length. So this is the distance between the middle of the, of the axles. So we're going to measure off the front here, I'm going to take this all the way to the back, and there we go, 80 inches. We're going to take it over onto this side, I don't know if you can get in here with a camera, we'll put it on on this Jeep as well, lo and behold, 80 inches. So therefore, this is a Series 1 80 inch Land Rover. And interestingly, this is also 80 inches. What else have we got with this particular vehicle that looks like it may have been taken as an idea from this one? If we come over here to the driving position, on the uh, 
Willis Jeep and here again replicated in the Hotchkiss we have the fuel tank underneath the driver's seat so actually this here you can see is where the fuel's contained and here's the filler cap but very simple that undoes and then there's a fuel strainer usually inside of there so that's underneath the driver's seat so let's have a look here might have to swap places Ollie so here we are on the 80 inch we're going to take that seat pad out and underneath the seat here very similar to on the Jeep we open this up and we have here whoops because we've got a Cirrus 2 steering wheel on it there we go again we have the fuel tanks you did see this in the, earlier in the video um, when we were cleaning the tank out so we've got a nice inline fuel filter there and again the lid is very is, is exactly the same and this part of the tank pulls out to allow you to pour petrol from a jerry can so you don't spill it everywhere. Exactly the same as was on the Willis Jeep. So let's have a look at the layout of the dash here. Just get that shut. Okay. okay, so now we're looking at the central instrument cluster. So we have a speedo here in miles per hour. We have a fuel gauge and we have a charging rate. And this is the on uh, ignition key basically you can see it saying off at the moment this is turned across the lights come on and we're in an on position the lights themselves are controlled by this lever below turn to the left and the right will actually turn the main lights on and off we have a choke which is down here we have the starter now interestingly this is in the dash gear stick four speeds plus the reverse and as we went through here we've got our um, transfer box high low and um, uh, high low and neutral and obviously we have our locker in here handbrake down on the floor accelerate to braking clutch you notice that it's very pushing downwards as if you're stamping down on those rather than sort of in front of you and a very basic steering column so let's have a look at the willis so what we have here very similar instrument cluster again is in the middle we have miles per hour on this particular one so being a Hotchkiss this could have been kilometers an hour to start with we have combination that means the fuel level pressure so that is the pressure of the oil in the engine ampere that is showing the charge rate and temperature down here and that's showing the temperature of the engine so all very similar to what we actually had in the Land Rover also handbrake gear stick and we have uh, two and four wheel drive and high and low uh, ratio gears. Okay, the starting sequence on the Series 1, we're going to make sure that the gear stick is in neutral. Now it's quite a sloppy box, so even when it's in gear we've got a slight movement, so we really do want to play around with that gear stick to make, make sure we're absolutely not in gear. We insert the key and we turn it to the right. You will see that these have all jumped because they're uh, electric or they're excited by the electricity that we've now put through it. And then down here is the starter button and we press that in and it should start. So Ollie is going to also press down on the accelerator to give us a little bit of gas while I press this button. Next one across Ollie, that's it. That's it. Okay, so there you go. We've got the petrol gauge up, the charge rates come up. So this was starting the Series 1 Land Rover. We're now going to start the Willis Jeep and we'll see how that works. Here we are with the Willis Jeep and we're going to start this now. Again, down here. We've got the added security of a key has been placed in this particular Jeep, but there's usually just a paddle switch here. We're turning this on, which is giving us the power. We're making sure, again, this is in neutral. I'm going to do the same as a Series 1. I'm actually going to try to get it into gear and wobble it, bring it into what I know is neutral, and I can see there's much more movement, so I'm really happy with that. And then the whole system's live, and we press the starter button, and there we go. So here we are with the 2.2-litre engine. What you will notice out of interest is written on the top of the block, it says Willy's Jeep. Willy's Jeep. Now that tells us very quickly that this is a post-war engine. Why would that be the case? Because the word Jeep didn't exist in the Second World War. Jeep was a shortened version of general purpose GP and then in slang it became Jeep. 
That name stuck with the vehicle immediately after the Second World War, so producers such as the Hotchkiss Motor Company, who made these under licence, use the word Jeep on the top. So if you have an engine in a World War II Jeep and it says the word J-E-E-P on the head, then at least you know that head is a post-war unit. So we're going to rev the engine now, it's nice and smooth this one. That is the familiar noise which is made by the fan. So that noise is just the Jeep noise. Now we have the Series 1 engine. This is an overhead valve engine, not a side valve, as per the Jeep. So they are a quieter engine by definition. Again, I'm going to rev the engine and we'll listen here. You can hear the air being sucked in through the carburetor, but the fan is of a different design, so it makes a different sound. You may not pick that up on the camera, but this is very sounds very different than the actual Jeep over there. Oh yes, someone did ask, why has it got a hole in the bonnet? Because this is a two, four, two and a quarter petrol engine, this carburetor sits a little bit high or higher than the original engine that was in this uh, 80, 80 inch series one. So therefore this has been done to allow this air filter to fit up against under the bonnet.